Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Hey, wildlings. Did you know that television was invented by a Brit? The industry skinny says his name was John Baird, and he wanted to find a way to scare the daylights out of his kids before bed. Nah, actually, I just made that last part up. But we do occasionally find that the old telly is a window to the darker side of our world. Like in tonight's tale, from No Sleep Users So Lonely 200. Part 1 of Does Anyone Remember Channel 42? Hey, does anyone in Idaho remember Channel 42 back in the late 90s? I work at a television studio as an editor. And I was going through our tape archives, so I found a few old VHS tapes. All of them were labeled, and each label had Channel 42, followed by the show and the episode. I started to feel a little nostalgic, because I uh, vaguely remembered some of them, or I thought I did. After watching them, I kind of wish that I hadn't. I don't know why my parents let me watch this crap. Maybe they didn't even know what was happening. So I decided to tell my tale here. Maybe some of you will remember this channel. Here's a rough description of each tape. The first tape, Channel 42, The Stitches the Clown Show, Episode 1 through 8. The show's full title is The Stitches the Clown Funhouse. Each episode starts the same. A clown with blood-red hair, dead eyes, and sloppily applied makeup in a black and red clown outfit comes on the screen. He flashes a fake smile and says, Hiya boys and girls, welcome to... There's a drum roll. The Stitches the Clown Funhouse! Canned noise of kids going, Yay! comes up. Then he goes into his activity and what he's going to be teaching the kids that day. That's where things tend to go off the rails. Episode 1 was him teaching kids how to remove human kidneys. Episode 2 was him telling them to put ammonia and bleach in a bucket and then leave it in their parents' room while they slept. Episode 3 was slightly better as all he did was teach them how to make food. The ingredients included rat poison, for flavor, the clown noted, and a human heart. Episode 4, the show changed. Uh, the set changed to a dingy basement. All you could hear was the clown giggling, and there was a child tied to a table. An off-screen voice notes that today, they're going to learn how to remove a human brain. Oh, hell no. I turned it off at that point. Why wasn't this shit reported to the police? Maybe the studio airing it didn't want to ruin their reputation, but what made me really sick was when I remembered there were several more episodes of this clown teaching kids. Deciding not to go back to the fun house, I moved on to the next tape. It was labeled Channel 42, The Free Loves, Episode 1 through 5. This show was a clear ripoff of the likes of the Teletubbies or Barney. Uh, the Free Loves were a family of creatures of varying colors. There was Daddy Free Love, Mama Free Love, Brother and Sister Free Love, and then Baby Free Love. They were creepy, but no more so than the, the Teletubbies. Seriously, those things never, ever stopped creeping me out. Episode 1 and 2 were normal as far as kids' television goes. Nothing out of the blue. It was episode 3 where things started getting odd. It was titled, The Free Loves Learn About Love. The entire episode was the creature's speaking in tongues, no movement, and blood started coming out of the costume's eyes. Uh, also, occasionally there was this flash of something 
on the screen. I, I made out the words, the void is watching. And that's it. While disturbing, it was still preferable to stitches. Episode 4 was somehow even worse. It was called The Collectors Come to Visit. The episode started normally until the knock at the door. Daddy Freelove gets up, goes over, opens the door, and a tall creature is there. Hollow sockets for eyes, no mouth. It was extremely tall with elongated arms. I felt unnerved, but kept watching. Daddy starts begging, and then the creature produces a knife and scalps him. The rest is the whole family being scalped and then flayed. Episode 5 is a normal episode of kids' television, except the free loves are all missing their skins. They look in pain with each movement, but they continue to do their daily routine. Then, out of nowhere, I mean, completely without warning, they attack the cameraman and begin eating him. The episode ends there as well as the tape. I'm happy to say that I found no more episodes of the free loves. Well, I did eventually find one, but we'll get to that in a sec here. The next tape that I watched was called Channel 42, It's Fun to Learn with Benson. It was an animated series featuring an anthropomorphic bat named Benson. The only lessons that it taught were methods of suicide. I'm not going to go into the details of each episode, but it was all really disturbing. The other characters, in case you were curious, were Ralph the Razor, Nancy the Noose, Sammy Shotgun, etc. You get the idea. The final tape was labeled Channel 42, The Free Loves Meet Stitches the Clown. Now, having watched both series, I did not want to watch the two meeting, but my morbid curiosity won out over better judgment, so I popped it in. The Free Loves were still skinless and now decaying. All right, this was fucked up. Then a cartoon car horn sounds, and there's a knock at the door. Mama Freelove got up, walked over, and opened the door. And there was the clown. He handed her flowers and, and smiled at her. He looked worse than before. His eyes were completely black, and his teeth were jagged. She let him in, and he saw Baby Free Love. So he ran over, picked up the baby creature, and proceeded to shake it violently like he was mixing a drink or something. Mama didn't say anything. She barely reacted. Daddy Free Love, however, seemed angry and started yelling at the clown. Stitches feigned a tear and then offered Daddy a flower. When Daddy leaned in to sniff it, the clown pulled out a revolver and shot him. The rest of the episode consisted of the clown violently murdering Mama, Brother, and Sister Freelove. He never stopped smiling the entire time. It's interesting that in this episode, he finally speaks, and he says, This has been fun, boys and girls, but sadly... The network is closing our funhouse, so until we meet again, remember what you've learned, and then I'll always be right here. He points at his heart with the revolver and fires. So after hours of googling and forum crawling, I haven't found anyone who's heard of the Free Loves, Stitches, or Channel 42. If you have information or even stories, please share them with me. I have to get to work now, but I'll write some more if I find anything. Update. I found more tapes with, uh, with two more shows. Here they are. First up, 
Channel 42, The Minstrel Klaus Variety Show, Episode 21. A man comes on stage, and his skin somehow doesn't seem to fit his body. He welcomes us in a thick German accent to his variety show, and what follows is a bunch of sketches and games. The first one is a game of Hangman where the audience picks letters at random. The only difference here is that a weeping man with a noose around his neck is waiting for them to finish. Each wrong letter draws him closer to death. The buzzer sounds, and he's dropped through with a loud crack. His feet are there twitching, and the curtains close as the audience howls with laughter. I should note that the audience all had inhumanly wide grins. The first sketch starts. Uh, it's something like I Love Lucy or a similar comedy show. A badly bruised woman tosses a pizza dough in the air and checks something on the stove. Uh, long story short, a deep fryer launches all of its white hot grease on her face. She screams in agony, the audience laughs. Let's move on, cause I'd rather not think of this much longer. The next segment is Minstrel Klaus dressed as a Nazi and chastising a frightened pair of people. He turns to the audience and says, What should I do to them? The audience then chants, Purify them! And that's when I stopped watching the tape. No, no, fuck that noise. Channel 42, Mystery Gang. Just as you might think, it's a by-the-numbers Scooby-Doo clone. The characters are Frank, who would be Fred, Danielle, who's Daphne, Mike, who's supposed to be Shaggy, Mika, who's Velma, and then Rex, the dog. Pretty generic. Well, until episode two. The group spends the episode staring at the camera and just crying. And then Rex starts speaking in tongues. Odd. Episode 3 picks up like nothing happened except that Rex is gone for some reason. No one mentions it, but I notice that all the characters look distraught. At one point, Mike and Mika are confronted by that week's villain who proceeds to rip out Mike's throat and then force feeds Mika the thing. <sighs> Next episode, same as the last, except Mike is gone now as well. Halfway through, Mika is found having hung herself. This continues until the final episode where Frank, alone, just cries the entire episode, nothing else. Then he shoots himself to end it. Well, that was depressing. Update. Okay, so I heard something downstairs and I found this VHS tape on my kitchen counter. It was labeled, Watch Me. I popped it in, and I'll be writing what I see. So it's clearly, <laughs> clearly more Stitches the Clown. It's the laugh. I will never forget that clown's laugh. I think he's the one who's holding the camera. He's looking into someone's bedroom from a window. The door just opened. Wait. That's me. The common wisdom is that the show must go on. But what happens when it drags you along for the ride? Part two next time, wildlings. Until then, stay scary and make the most of your nights. <laughs>